I'm Leslie Kenny. I'm the founder of Oxford HealthSpan, based here in Oxford, England, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about spermidine, the compound in the first nutraceutical we're bringing to market, primidine. So spermidine was first discovered by Dutch microbiologist Antony van Leeuwenhoek in the first part of the 17th century. We didn't know what it actually did until the beginning of the 20th century, when it became clear that its presence in semen was there to protect the DNA. Now we know that spermidine actually triggers autophagy, which is the process of cellular renewal and recycling for which Japanese scientist Yoshinori Ozumi won the Nobel Prize in Medicine or Physiology in 2016. I first came across spermidine about 18 months ago when I was introduced to an immunology professor here who told me all about the immune boosting properties of spermidine. As an autoimmune survivor myself, I found this quite interesting. It has a lot of other benefits as well, but I really can't discuss those because of FDA rules and regulations. However, at the same time that I was working with that academic around the immune system, I was also collaborating with an old friend and colleague named Dennis Noble. He is an emeritus professor of physiology at the University of Oxford. He is a pioneer in systems biology in the United Kingdom and the individual who computed the rhythm of the human heart in 1960. He has, however, over that time, had many outstanding pupils, one of which is now the Empress of Japan. And it was during an official audience with the Empress that he was invited to look at a treasure in the Imperial Household Archive, a 10th century set of scrolls written by the court physician to the emperor. These 30 scrolls were the magnum opus for Yoshiori Tamba, the court physician to the emperor at the time, and three of the 30 scrolls have to do exclusively with human longevity. One of them in particular has to do with how we retain spermidine in our bodies as a way to prolong life. Now, I won't go into the details of that particular scroll, However, what I will say is that Dennis and I believe that we are now able to show that what was observed in the 10th century can now be proved scientifically. And unfortunately, the very intricate, exact instructions for the emperor to produce and retain spermidine are not the kind of thing that everybody can do. Not everyone has the time to do that. Not everyone has the knowledge to do that. However, we can increase the amount of spermidine that we take into our bodies as we age and our own endogenous production goes down. So how can we increase that intake of spermidine? Well, we can ingest it and there are two diets in the world that are very high in spermidine. One is the Japanese, the traditional Japanese diet, and the other is the Mediterranean diet. There are a number of researchers who have begun to say publicly that they think spermidine may be one of the secrets, if not the secret behind the longevity promoting benefits of both of these diets. Now in Japan, one dish stands out apart from all the others in both of these two diets for having a very high amount of spermidine and that is Japanese natto. It's long fermented soybeans. They have a very unique taste, smell, and mouthfeel that is not to everyone's liking. My own mother takes it and she sort of inoculates it by wrapping it with rice like a little rice ball but we can get it other ways. So we can get it from plants, but after natto, the highest concentration of spermidine is actually in wheat germ. Now we could eat wheat germ, but wheat germ is very volatile because of the lipids in it. 
and that means that it goes rancid very quickly. However, I can get much higher concentrations of stable spermidine by using a high concentration extract of wheat germ. And I found this happily enough in the Japanese countryside. I think there's a kind of um, synchronicity that Yoshiori Tamba, the court physician to the Japanese emperor, and Yoshinori Ozumi, both uh, medical scientists from Japan, separated by a thousand years, but both who observed autophagy, uh, also come from Japan. So I was very happy to source our spermidine from Japan as well. And by increasing the amount of spermidine in our diet, we can actually trigger autophagy even as we grow older and allow that process of continuous cellular renewal, repair and recycling to happen. I hope that this video has given you some historical background on spermidine and given you some information on how you can incorporate it into your diet. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below or get in touch with me directly. I always love to talk to people about this.